Hello, brethren. Thank you for joining me at this moment. And um, I would like us to look into what for me I see to be a very important topic. It is important because many are presently going through with severe pain in their body. Many are experiencing mental uh, illness. Many are experiencing uh, one sickness or the other in their body. And I know from my findings so far, in the light of the knowledge of Christ given to us in the Bible, I have come to know that our body does not need to forsake. Our body does not need to forsake. It is very, very uh, unfortunate that we were not taught these things while we were growing up. We were not taught to uh, engage the revelation of, of our immortal identity. And the effect of that is obvious in our world today, most especially among the community of saints, of believers. The rate at which believers, saints, are experiencing sickness and disease in this day and time uh, is not proper. It's really, really not proper. And that issue needs to be addressed. We have to address that issue. If the truth of what God accomplished in Christ is given to us, then we need to understand the application of this truth in order for our physical body to, in, to constantly experience sickness-free life, disease-free life, pain-free life. We should not sit down and watch our body system break down. We should not sit down and watch what is called sickness and disease crack down our physical body. What you need to know, what we need to know in order to keep our body in that state of perfect health is simply the understanding of the things that God invested in our spirit. I have to, at this point, appreciate the medical science for coming up with all the drugs medications that they have offered to the world all right at one point or the other we were beneficiaries of their uh their drugs their medications and we appreciate them for that but i am talking to you my brother in the faith and i'm saying that we cannot continue to rely on drugs and I have not said that it is wrong to take drugs but I'm saying that we have a new and living way provided for us through the body of Jesus Christ and we have to see this new and living way to be able to explore and maximize the things that God revealed to us in Christ most especially regarding health, perfect health, perfect health. There is 
understanding or knowledge that keeps your body in perfect health knowledge what knowledge is that what is the knowledge that keeps my body out of the reach of sickness and disease what is the knowledge that keeps my body out of the reach of sickness and disease first and foremost we need to understand that the body given to adam when he was created was a body that could not forsake except adam's spirit experiences death i say that again i said that we need to understand that the physical body which god gave to adam was a body that could not forsake in any way except the spirit which adam is experiences death all right god created adam not for him to die but a certain instruction was given to him given to him which if he disobeys he will experience death and you and I understand from scripture that Adam, Adam disobeyed that instruction in the Garden of Eden and he experienced death. In experiencing death, his body, which never experienced sickness and disease, began to experience sickness and disease. What am I really saying? I am saying that if you look if you examine the life of Adam very well, it will help you to track the origin of sickness. Adam never experienced sickness and disease in his body before the fall. Sickness and disease together with pain are products of the fall. Sickness and disease that ravages the physical body of men in the world today are products of the fall. Before the fall, such things were not in the earth. Adam and Eve never experienced sickness and disease before the fall. Immediately their spirit tested death. And they were driven out from the Garden of Eden their body came under the influence of sickness and disease which is to say that the entrance of of sin and death in their spirit generated sickness and disease in their body all right so what jesus did was when he came in his death and resurrection, he completely removed from your spirit if you are born again. For those who have been born again, and of course the provision is for all men, but not all have attained it. Provision for freedom from fallen nature, from your fallen nature is for all men, but it is those who have been baptized into Christ are now partakers of divine nature. Now, follow me carefully. Now, Jesus, when he resurrected, made divine nature available to every man on the earth because it is written that in him all men shall be made alive so jesus in his resurrection experience made divine nature available for all men to assess and the way to assess it is that a man who is an offspring of adam must accept him as his head because adam the head of human race all right brought death jesus 
the word of God made flesh, brought life. So all men experienced death in Adam. They are to experience, experience life in Christ. So the same way all died in Adam, all are programmed to be made alive in Christ. All right, so when a man, a natural man, according to Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, which says, if you believe in your heart, in the Lord Jesus, and with your mouth declare that God raised him from the dead, he said, then thou shalt be saved. The word saved there connotes the removal of the fallen nature and the impartation of divine nature. All right, so Jesus made divine nature available. This divine nature is life and immortality, which was revealed after death was abolished. All right, now, if you have received divine nature, if you are now a partaker of divine nature because you are born again, I am saying to you that what was responsible or what is responsible for sickness and disease in the physical body of man has been removed out of your spirit. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. If you read Colossians 2 14 or Colossians 1 14 somewhere there, it says that God by the spirit circumcised you with circumcision made without hands which is the removal of the body of sins or body of flesh. That body of flesh or body of sins speaks of the nature of death, the nature of sin in the human spirit. God, by the circumcision of Christ, removed from your spirit the, the nature, the fallen nature, which is responsible for sickness and disease in the physical body of men, all right, and then impacted into your spirit divine nature, his own nature. Now, divine nature does not produce sickness in the body. Divine nature cannot produce disease in the body. Divine nature terminates sickness. Divine nature terminates disease. Now, I need you at this point to see I need us at this point to see that there is a difference between your spirit, which is you, your real essence, your real personality, and the physical body you are using to interface with this mechanical world. And so, what is not, anything your spirit is not subject to has does not have a legal ground to feed on your body. The moment your spirit was raised up together with Christ and was translated out of the kingdom of darkness, out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of God's dear son, your spirit became out of the reach of fallen spirits. Your spirit is now out of the reach of sickness and disease. Therefore, your body is not permitted or your body is no longer under the influence of the law of the spirit of life. Your body is no longer under the influence of the law of the spirit of life. This same body of yours, when the old spirit occupied it before you the new spirit came in all right because the spirit, the body you are using now the physical body you are using now you as the new creature spirit is not the first to occupy it you understand that the human spirit once occupied your body at born again experience that human spirit was removed from the body. You, the new creation spirit, was brought into the body. Now, you, the new creation spirit, your nature is divine nature. 
Your nature is life. The human spirit, who happened to be the first occupant of the physical body, because that spirit followed your body out of the womb of the woman that gave birth to your body. All right, that old spirit had sin and death as its nature. But you, the new creation, your nature is divine nature. Your life is the immortal life. All you need to know, all you need to do in order to keep your body in perfect health state is to gain the knowledge, is to acquire the knowledge of your immortal spirit. It is to acquire the knowledge of the realities of your immortal spirit. Once the knowledge of the realities of your immortal spirit revealed in Christ, documented in the scripture, for you and I to read and gain knowledge, the moment this knowledge is allowed or you allow this knowledge to gain ascendancy in your mind, in your consciousness, all right, it makes it difficult for sickness and disease to survive in your body. What I'm saying now is very, very important that we understand it. Because we are the body of Christ. The body of Christ is superior to elements of this fallen earth. The body of Christ is designed to walk and reign on the earth. But you see, we need spiritual knowledge to reign. There is mechanical knowledge. There is uh, scientific knowledge. All right? Then there is the knowledge we all acquired from the secular school. We go to school to acquire knowledge. For some of us that studied uh, mechanical engineering or physics, we have that knowledge right now. Then there is spiritual knowledge. You cannot with the knowledge you acquired from the secular school keep your body from sickness and disease. You see, because the, that knowledge, as good as it appears, it breeds fear. You need, we need spiritual knowledge. And this spiritual knowledge is nothing else but the revelation of the resurrected Christ. There is the resurrected Christ. There is the Jesus that died on the cross. And then there is the resurrected Jesus Christ. The resurrected Jesus Christ, I mean the resurrected Jesus Christ, appeared out of the grave in an immortal state. There is a whole lot of difference between his personality as the Messiah and his personality as the high priest. There is a whole lot of difference between the personality of the word of God as the Messiah when he came to the earth to die and his personality as the resurrected immortal high priest. So you need to see him as he is now and not the way he was when he came to the earth as man to die for man. The way he was when he appeared in the earth as man to die for man is not the way he appeared, is not the way he is now after his resurrection experience. Many are not aware of that. Many are yet to see him as he is now. And that is the reason why it is difficult for most people, most believers, most saints, to accept that as he is, so are we now. How is he now? How? There's a way he is now.
All right. That same Jesus that walked this earth went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. That image that men saw, men touched, the woman of the issue of blood touched his garment. The way he appeared and related with the Jewish people is not the way he is now. <laughs> He's not. All right. Now, now, and I'm saying that when you see him as he is now, and you allow the knowledge of him in his now reality to gain ascendancy in your consciousness, all right, to gain ascendancy in your thinking process, all right, it makes it difficult for sickness and disease to survive in your body. It makes it difficult for the atmosphere of this earth to weaken the, 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 the fabrics and the body's molecules, your body molecules, or your body, uh, 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 your body uh, organs. See, the rate at which the physical body of men grow old is alarming. The rate at which their body organs experience weakness, weakness, is alarming. What is responsible for that experience? You think is the will of God. No. There is a law that is at work. It is called the law of sin and death. Many are conscious of that law. But I need you to know, as one born again, that what you have in your spirit is the law of the spirit of life. And the law of the spirit of life was programmed in your spirit, your new creation spirit, by God. All right? So that when you gain the knowledge of your immortal identity, that knowledge in your heart opens up the portals of your spirit, the channels of your spirit, for the atmosphere of your spirit environment to invade your physical body. Your physical body needs the atmosphere of your spirit environment in order to in order to experience perfect health we believe according to scripture that death has been abolished it should not be something to believe it should be something to know you know you can believe what you don't know but when a knowing is in, in place, when knowledge is in place, it's a it's uh, a different ball game altogether. I'm simply saying that sickness and disease exist in the world, but you are not of the world. You are not of the world, even though you are in the world. The spirit you are is not of the world. The spirit you are is not one with this earth. The spirit you are is not one with the universe. Forget those who are saying that they are one with the universe. No. The natural man is one with the universe. Adam is one with the universe. His generations are one with the universe. But the new creation man is beyond the universe. The scripture said that God translated your spirit, all right, and made you to sit far above heavens. When you say principalities and powers, you are talking about realms and dimensions which comprises the entire eternity together with the universe put together. So the spirit you are as the new creation, when you consider your seated position, it helps you to understand that you are beyond the universe. You are beyond the earth. He says, and I quote, God raised us up together with Christ and made us to sit with him at the right hand side of the majesty on high. Where do you think that place is? You think it's a place within the universe. You think it's a place within the earth. Do you think it is a place within eternity? No. 
we are talking about a, a, a civilization that was before this universe was created. The scripture is saying that that civilization is your reality. That civilization is your identity. And that civilization is uncreated life. Uncreated life. Uncreated nature. Uncreated identity. Uncreated essence. Uncreated glory. That is your identity. Now, you need to remove your attention from your physical body. You see, because you cannot with your attention fully focused on the physical body and keep your body in, the, in that perfect health state. What you need to see is your spirit. God gave to us the revelation of our invisible spirit. And if you can see your invisible spirit, you have won the battle. You see, because you are, <laughs> Jesus, you are, when I say you, I am talking about your spirit. Those who think that we are preaching this physical body are the one misunderstanding us. You are wearing a physical body. This physical body is not a mortal. I am talking about your spirit. What God gave birth to is your spirit, not the physical body. It is your spirit that is born of the word of God, not this physical body. God is going to give us a mortal, a mortal body, a mortal physical body at the end of the day. But right now, he wants you and I to understand the structure of our spirit, man. He wants you to understand how you are in your spirit reality, in your spirit essence, in your spirit structure. God wants you to see how you are in that realm, in that region, in the region of your spirit. You know what your physical body looks like. If you are asked now to describe your physical body, I know that you can do that very well. Do you know what your spirit looks like? Have you seen your spirit? Do you really know what your spirit looks like? If you know your spirit the way you know your body, I am telling you no sickness can survive in your body. No disease can survive in your body. No disease. Because your spirit, your spirit is an embodiment of the law of the spirit of life. At the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he introduced a law called the law of the spirit of life. At the death of Adam, he introduced a law called the law of sin and death. So we are looking at two laws here. The law of sin and death, which came into, uh, into effect at the fall of Adam. And the law of the spirit of life, which came into effect at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so Romans chapter 8 is saying that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So the old human spirit, all right, embodied the law of sin and death. The new creation spirit embodies the law of the spirit of life. You are a new creation spirit. You are not the human spirit. And I'm saying to you that the day you became born again, the human spirit that once occupied this, your body, was removed from your body. And then God allowed you the new spirit, the new creation spirit to come into the body to reside. So you are the new occupant of the body. The old spirit passed away. You, the new spirit, came into the same house. So you need a consciousness of your spirit person. You need the knowledge, the revelation of your spirit personality. All right. In order to undo the things that the law of sin and death had already done in the physical body. You need the consciousness, the revelation, the knowledge of the spirit you, which is the new creation, Christ, the new creation being. All right? To flush out every program, everything that the law of sin and death programmed in your body together with the biological DNA. There are things programmed in the body. All right. So when Jesus says that I will watch the world, the, the church, with the water of the world, 
and he went for that to say that he will use he will use the knowledge of his person to achieve that so when we receive the knowledge of his person not the stories of adam not the stories of abraham not the stories of any prophets i am talking about the person of christ his person is different from the stories and the personality of all the prophets of old so the person we are to project is the person of christ because he is your spirit being made manifest when you see the spirit of christ as he is revealed in the new testament you are seeing your spirit personality because christ is the spirit personality god placed before us to study in view of knowing who we are in, in who we are in our spirit i am telling you that the immortal realities which god invested in our spirit in our spirit in our spirit when we allow the knowledge of such realities into our heart and into our consciousness all right the body is put on the journey of experiencing new programming there were things programmed in your body through the uh, person of the old spirit all right that is why i am of the opinion that it is important for every believer for every saint to understand the meaning of new birth the meaning of born again born again means the day the human spirit that followed your body to the earth was removed from your body and you the new spirit came in into the body so the, the you the new spirit is not the spirit saved from sin you see lack of lack of the understanding of what i just said now is the reason why it is difficult for most people to believe that they are immortal because they are thinking that they are the old spirit god saved no god saved that spirit when there was a confession of the lordship of jesus christ and then removed the spirit from the body and brought you the new spirit into the body so you are when you say you are a new creation it is not the old spirit that became the new creation the old spirit was saved and was made to pass away it does not exist anymore then you the new spirit came into the same body to use the body so the consciousness of your newness as a new creation the consciousness of your agelessness because the spirit you are is ageless all right the the age of the physical body is not the age of the spirit you are the spirit you are is ageless it has no beginning it is an immortal spirit this old human spirit had beginning adam is the beginning of every human spirit for when adam was created that was when all human spirits were created and were locked into adam's loins at a time adam began to procreate by having to know his wife and then his wife will conceive and the child will be you know is born you see that yeah so every physical body that is born in the earth comes into the earth with a spirit inside it the day a man gets born again that spirit that followed the physical body into the earth was removed from the body and then a new spirit which is the new spirit you are the new creation the spirit born of the world an offspring of christ was brought into this body so a new spirit is occupying the body now that is you that is born again i'm not talking about everybody in the world there are those who are not yet born again provision for them to have this experience is for everybody but not all are already not 
not everybody had, ex had, had, had have experienced what I'm saying now. But for those of us who have experienced it, we need to understand what it is that we experienced. So you are a new spirit. You are a new spirit. If you are born again, you are a new spirit. You are not a recreated spirit. You are not a saved spirit, a spirit saved from sin. Your body, your physical body, is a body that belongs to that spirit that was saved. That spirit that died in Adam. Alright? But you are a new spirit who came to replace the spirit that was saved and was made to pass away. 1 Corinthians 5.17 If any man be in Christ, or if any man be in Christ, there is a new creation. This man that accepted Jesus Christ is the man that the scripture is saying that if any man be in Christ, meaning if any man confess Christ, if any fallen man or any natural man confesses the lordship of Christ, he is, he is meant to pass away. Then there is a new creation. A new spirit comes into the old body. The old spirit has been taken off from the body. He has passed away. So the spirit you are is not that spirit that died in Adam. It's not that spirit that was saved from sin. It's not that spirit that was once in union with Satan. It's not that spirit that was once in union with death. That's not the spirit you are. That spirit was saved and was made to pass away. You are a new spirit. You see, so the knowledge of you, the new spirit, the knowledge of who you are as a new spirit, this body needs it. That knowledge needs, needs to be mirrored into your body via your consciousness. But that knowledge has to be received into your heart first. Then your heart converts that knowledge into consciousness and then mirrors it into your body for the purpose of keeping your body in perfect health state. You understand what I've explained? I cannot, in a teaching like this, or in one teaching or one section of uh, teaching, explain everything. But we are going to keep at it. All right. Tomorrow evening, by God's grace, uh, I'm going to do a teaching again, still on this same issue, because we all must, at this point, come into this experience of divine health, perfect health. It, we are not begging God for it. It's not something that prayer will work out. It is with knowledge we activate spiritual laws. It is with knowledge we activate spiritual realities, the operation of spiritual realities. It is with knowledge. So I am saying in closing that the revelation knowledge of who you are, when I say who you are, I'm talking about Christ Jesus in his resurrected reality, the knowledge of him because he is your spirit revealed. He is your spirit revealed to you. The, when the knowledge of him is received into your heart and your heart converts that knowledge into consciousness and mirrors that consciousness into your body, 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 body structure, it makes it difficult for sickness and disease to survive in your body. See, brother, my brother and my sister, what I'm saying now is very important. Just look at the... Look at the rate to which sickness and disease is plaguing the earth now. Check the developed, the developing countries or the developed countries as they are called. Fear is in their in their atmosphere. Just imagine the one, you see, nobody is talking about HIV anymore. HIV is now a thing of the past. Is a folk, a folk. Nobody is talking about HIV anymore. Do you still hear about HIV? COVID. The presence of COVID have, have made HIV, that name HIV, obsolete. And you think COVID is the last. Jesus said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. 
but you need to know the light you are. You are light. Romans chapter 8, verse 10. He said, you are light. You are life. Wherefore, if... If... Um, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He said, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit you are is life. What is life? Life is not... Is not is not uh, is not expressions is not an expression that is related to the fallen man you know when men acquire material things they say i'm enjoying life that's not life life in this regard is the person of god is the nature of god is the identity of god is God's immortal, uncreated essence. And your, the spirit you are is said to be that life. You are life. How can you, life, dwell in this physical body? And sickness and disease will be eating up the body. You think about it. If truly you are life, according to the scripture, because you are born again, and you, the life, is using this physical body, how come sickness and disease is eating up the, 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 the parts of your physical body? Think about it. It means that we do not know yet that life that we are. We say we are. We have not seen it. It means that the, the exact knowledge of that light, of that life, has not gained ascendancy in our heart and our consciousness. When that happens, I'm assuring you that your body, no sickness, no disease, hits your body and survives. That's an assurance I am giving you. Because love is greater than hate. And light is greater than darkness. So what we need is knowledge. First Timothy, the Spirit of God said expressly, He said, those that are sons of God, those that are saved, meaning those that are begotten sons of God, should come to the knowledge of the truth. There is what truth is. There are vital informations all over the Bible. But there is among all of those vital informations or revelations, there is the revelation of there is revelation of the truth. Paul said, When I came to you in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech. To declare to you the testimony of God. There is what is called testimony of God. It's not the testimony men share in our uh, denominational structures. You know, oh, I have a testimony. And the pastor will say, come and share your testimony. And then the brother or the sister or the man or the woman comes up, comes to the platform, all right? which we call uh, altar, and then praise the Lord. All right, I got a new job. Uh, my son just graduated from Oxford University. I, I just, uh, I was uh, issued visa. I just bought land. I was promoted in my place of work. You see, those are not testimony. First Corinthians chapter two, verse one. Brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech, declaring unto you the testimony of God. What is the testimony of God? The testimony of God is not how Satan was defeated. And of course, Satan was defeated. And Satan was defeated according to the will of God. But what is the testimony of God? I need you to read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20. The way it's written there 
you may not be able to comprehend it, but I need you to ask the Holy Spirit to open up Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 to you. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20, it says, uh, what God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. You see, at the point of him being raised from the dead, something was accomplished in him which was not in him when he was born physically and when he died on the cross. Ephesians 1.20, it's 20, 120, Ephesians 120, it says, what God wrought in Christ. So Paul prayed for their eyes to be open to see, not how he died. And of course he died, but and in his death, he conquered Satan. All right, but when he was raised from the dead, all right, God accomplished something in him. There is what God used Jesus to accomplish, and then there is what God accomplished in Christ. They are two different realities. All right, Hebrew chapter 9, verse 26. It says uh, that Jesus came at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. In Hebrew chapter 2, verse 14. It says that, um, Wherefore, as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, he likewise the same took part of the same, that by death he might destroy him that had the power of death. And, verse 15, Deliver those who through the fear of death were subject to bondage all their lifetime. So, the Messiah accomplished something in his death. Then, there is what God accomplished in him. We have preached what God used his word as the Messiah to do. But we are yet to preach what God himself did in the Messiah. That's what Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 is saying. What God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. He said that's that which God wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. When the revelation hits you and the knowledge gains entrance into your heart. Because that knowledge is the true light. That lighted every man that came into the world. When that knowledge gains entrance into your heart. And your heart converts the knowledge into consciousness. And mirrors it into your body system. That's the end of sickness and disease for your body. I am telling you what I know. I'm not saying what I preached. I am telling you what I know. And what I have seen and heard. So far in my journey and in my exploration in the holiest of all, which is the immortal tabernacle of the immortal priesthood of Christ. As a priest, because every believer is a priest, every believer is a king, you need to understand how to explore the realities of the holiest of all. The holiest of all is the new tabernacle for the priesthood of Christ. The same way God through Moses, pitched a tabernacle for the priesthood of Aaron. God also, by the Holy Ghost, preached a new tabernacle for the new priesthood of Christ. Because Hebrew chapter 7 verse 21 says that he changed the law and changed the priesthood. So the coming in of a new priesthood, which is the priesthood of Christ, came with a tabernacle, a new tabernacle. And this new tabernacle is called holiest of all. Is an invisible tabernacle. It is invisible in the earth, but visible within the realm of God, within the civilization of God. So in that tabernacle, which is our tabernacle, you must understand that you as a priest and as an immortal king, you, 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 have, you have access into that tabernacle. The same way Aaron and his sons assessed their own tabernacle. You as an immortal priest, have access into your immortal tabernacle. But you and I were not taught these things. And that is why our body is suffering sickness and disease. But an end has come to that experience. And I want to pray with you if you have pain in your body, if you have sickness, if you have disease in your body, kindly place your hand on your chest or on the part of the body where you have that pain. And I'm going to command the pain to live now and the pain will live now. 
place your hand on your body where you have pain or where you have sickness or where you are feeling this ease. Place your hand there. I am going to command that illness to check out of your body. And right now, you're going to see the results. So do me a favor. Place your hand on your body, in your chest or where you're having the pain. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you for your sons, my brethren, who are part of this life teaching. I thank you because you love all of us, you love them. I don't want any of us to have pain in our body. You don't want any of us to have sickness and disease in our body. You don't want any of our physical uh, organs of our body to grow weak, to depreciate. And that is the reason why you you allowed the law of the spirit of life to reside in our spirit right now i command every pain in your body pain all you check out now pain go now pain in your head i command it now in the name of jesus pain go waist pain go Headache, go. Uh, ankle pain, knee pain. In the name of Jesus, I command you now, go. Pain at the right side of your uh, uh, lower abdomen. In the name of Jesus, I command you, leave now. You spirit of infirmity manifesting in different form as pain and other illnesses. I command you now, leave and never return. Now. It's an order, it's an instruction that you need to obey. I command you, leave now. All pain, go. Every sickness shrink and dematerialize now. In the name of Jesus. All right, do me a favor. Stretch your hand, stretch your leg, shake your body. If you indicated and I prayed for you, just do what you could not do before because the pain is gone. The sickness is gone. The disease is gone. I command the growth to dematerialize now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the toothache to stop. Toothache, stop now. Now, in the name of Jesus, all pain go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your word is forever honored on our lips. Thank you because no sickness, no disease can resist the authority of your name on our lips. And when we give voice to the revelation of your identity, it changes a whole lot in our environment. Thank you, Father. Thank you. All right. See you again tomorrow. Uh, same, same time tomorrow evening. I love you. Stay blessed. Drop your comments. And if you have checked your body and the pain is gone, the sickness is gone, Kindly uh, notify us on the on the comment uh, uh, um, provided there on Facebook, and if you are still having the pain, also drop your comment there, and then I will engage you privately, and we'll put an end to that permanently. You are loved. Thank you so much.